State of Decay 2 comes out soon when it will add four-player co-op to the zombie survival sim action you might remember from 2013's original State of Decay. We recently ploughed our way through a few hours of the game like a salvaged automobile through so many road zombies. And we're here now to share fresh new gameplay footage and the crucial lessons we took away from the experience. So buckle up for the seven things we learned playing State of Decay 2. State of Decay 2 is a zombie survival sim in which you control a group of survivors, manage their makeshift settlements and explore their world and, when someone dies, they're dead for good. As if things weren't bad enough in this post-apocalypse, there's a virulent new strain of zombifying sickness in the world of State of Decay 2. This is known as Blood Plague. And as if zombies weren't already freaky enough, zombies which carry blood plague have glowing red eyes, like the Terminator or me during hay fever season. Being nibbled on by such a zombie will fill a survivor's blood plague infection meter until they become fully infected. Oh no, no way am I catching this blood plague bullshit. At this point, that infected survivor in your base is a ticking time bomb. Or should that be ticking time zomb uh, with a limited time before they start chowing down on your settlement dwellers instead of their allocated food rations. I need to get rid of this plague shit or I'm fucked. In the face of such a situation, you'll have to decide what to do with the unlucky victim. No, I'm fine, really. Just vomiting blood. Nothing to see here. If you've set up an infirmary in your base, you can send the patient there to slow the infection, or you can cook up a cure if you have the right materials. But if it's too late for that, you're left with the painful decision over what to do with this plague haver. You have the option to spare them, exile them from your community, or quote, euthanize them. In our case, the most merciful thing to do was put Isabel here down like Old Yeller, if Old Yeller had zombie plague instead of rabies. Uh, spoiler. Or we thought it was the most merciful thing to do, except it turns out here euthanize is a euphemism for execution next to the community vegetable patch. Wow, grim. Hey, uh, could someone clear Isabel's corpse away? This place is a mess. When your community has lost a survivor to the ravages of blood plague, avenging them by destroying the source of the infection will seem like just the thing to do. And if you wondered what kind of disgusting mound of human skulls fused together with diseased flesh could be ground zero for the plague, then wonder no more, because here one is. This abomination is called a plague heart, and these are focal points for the plague, meaning they'll be surrounded by plague zombies and an ominous red mist. To find a plague heart, your best bet is scoping out your local area from a nice high surveying spot. Seems like nothing more to see here. Then, to destroy said plague heart, you jog up and drop a grenade or three on it. Almost out of that. This, like a standing backflip, is easier said than done, given how said plague heart is located in beautiful downtown Zombieville. That's a plague heart, all right. To defeat the blood plague in a town, you must destroy all the plague hearts in it. Well, that was nice. It's a messy business, but someone's got to do it. And what's more, this is a good location for collecting plague samples, which you can use to develop plague cures. These cures will of course be too late for the plague victims we've already mercy domed, but so it goes. R.I.P. Isabel. Driving is still very much the best way to get around the map in State of Decay 2, because however much you enjoy a jog, your stamina will only get you so far. I can't keep doing this. And most importantly, only then can you smash up zombies with your car. State of Decay veterans will remember the satisfying splat of a zombie roadkill. Though newcomers be advised, vehicles have finite durability and will take damage from ramming enemies. So, curb your enthusiasm or get good at mending mangled fenders. Better yet, you should master the art of a well-timed car door opening 
such that you can lethally swipe baddies as you drive by. Nice. And if you're cruising around in State of Decay 2's new online co-op, your co-op buddy can ride shotgun and take care of door duties on the other side of your battle wagon. Speaking of online co-op, State of Decay 2's online co-op works like this. Up to three other players can select a survivor from their community to jump into your game world. Then, in your game world, all of you join forces to explore and scavenge as a co-op survivor super team. Hey, Stench Farm! In our experience with the game, you don't have to look far to uncover precious resources to supply your base. Well, it's something. You'll find goodies in just about every shack and shed you come across. I love when I find something good. However, your backpack inventory space is strictly limited. There's no room for that. So, the more the merrier on a co-op scavenging run. You can watch each other's backs while you cooperatively ransack your containers of loot. While you're out gallivanting with your co-op partners, back at base your community will be ticking along nicely. Or alternatively, if you've done a terrible job of looking after the place, I've dropped off some goodies. they'll be trying to eke out an existence in the face of supply shortages and an imminent plague epidemic. Yeah, I know that's a lot of zombies, but we can beat them! However, the enhanced, more elaborate base building in State of Decay 2 offers a whole suite of upgradable facilities to maintain and improve life in your camp, such as the aforementioned infirmary, sleeping quarters of varying degrees of comfort and capacity, and farming plots to produce food. Meanwhile, as you're out in the world, you'll encounter friendly but friendless lone survivors. I'm so glad you're here. You might invite this solo survivor to join your burgeoning burg. Hey there. Maybe it's because you're a nice person, but more likely it's because their skills show they're an amazing chef who could feed your community, for example, or an accomplished fighter who could kick a zombie's head clean off. Thanks, I appreciate it. Follow me, I'll show you your sweet digs. And all that sounds fine and wonderful, except recruiting new survivors means a bigger population, which requires more resources, and not only that, bigger settlements with more facilities generate more ambient noise. Guys, I think we've got a siege building up. As your base grows, the hubbub increases, because apparently no one checked their community notice board for the memo that said no loud talking for the foreseeable future or band practice. This noise makes the settlement more attractive to local zombies, so until your band of rowdy survivors learn to live like the family in a quiet place, you'll have to keep a careful eye on that passive noise meter. That screaming means we're under attack! Between managing your inventory, monitoring morale and avoiding being eaten by the ravenous undead, things can get overwhelming in State of Decay 2 pretty quickly. So you might be tempted to hit pause every now and again just to catch your breath or make a sandwich or ruminate grimly about that time you had to euthanize Isabel. Oh. Well, as was the case in the previous game, just because you're taking a break doesn't mean the zombies are. Don't expect the zombies to stop just because you have. Amazing work ethic, those guys. Maintaining morale in the apocalypse is a tough task because of all the zombies and the blood plague and all the people getting mercy killed, which is why you need to go the extra mile to make sure the people in your settlement are as happy as they can possibly be. Luckily, State of Decay 2's base building system includes plenty of options for upgrading your settlement to make it a veritable home away from home, away from zombies. How are you? I'll see you soon, promise. In addition to the purely practical facilities you can build, such as a kitchen and taekwondo studio, there are also specific morale-boosting installations, such as the lounge,
where you can schedule breaks for your weary survivors or hold a games night. That'll be fun. Attendance is mandatory. Upgrade the lounge, however, and you also have the option to turn it into a makeshift cocktail lounge with just the addition of several gallons of scavenged medical-grade ethanol. Now morale is great because everyone's too drunk to remember that zombies are a thing. You're welcome. Those were some of the key learnings we took away from a session with State of Decay 2, which we are looking forward to playing properly when it comes out on Xbox One and PC on release date 22nd of May 2018. Are you up for some State of Decay 2 zombie survivalism? Let us know in the comments, would you kindly, and please do drop us a like if you liked the video. Also, subscribe for more State of Decay 2 action, why not? And thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. I love this. Lay waste to a few more zombies. Yep. Oh, ah! no. Oh. oh, no. Oh, ambush. boy, oh, no. Ambush. Oh, ambush. Okay. Yeah. From a bush. Oh. If I've learned nothing else about the zombie apocalypse, Andy, yeah. is that things go sideways really fast <laughs> yeah. in State of Decay 2. <laughs> except for cars. They don't go sideways fast. No, or, or anywhere at all. fast. Yeah. yeah. Because they're let's rubbish. go. I've all got right, a bad feeling.